All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Genomics Light, um, our Career Pathways with Illumina Lab uh, session this evening. This is our last one uh, for this year, so thank you very much for joining us. Uh, my name's Em, and I'm the Education and Learning Officer um, at the Welcome Genome Campus, and joined us today we have Fran, um, also from uh, the education team and we have Andrew and Agatha uh, from Illumina Labs. So in this session um, I'm going to give a really quick introduction to the campus for those of you who may not have come across us before and then I'm going to hand over to our speakers for this evening who are going to share their career pathway with us um, and give us an opportunity to ask any questions. Um, in case you've not used Zoom webinar before, um, there's a chat function which you can use to ask any sort of technical queries or issues you might be having. And there's also a Q&A function where you can pop any questions you have for our speakers and we'll answer most of those at the end. So, this is the Welcome Genome Campus based just outside of Cambridge, um, which is where we would be in normal times, but obviously this year everything is online. Um, on the campus, we've got two main research institutes. We've got the Welcome Sanger Institute and Emble EBI. Emble EBI is completely data-based, so it's all working on computers. There's no sort of traditional wet lab uh, set up there. Um, and uh, Welcome Sanger is a mix of both. So there's some sort of traditional wet lab uh, stuff and some data stuff as well, which we'll see more about uh, as our speakers tell us a bit more about their jobs. Um, to start off with, I'm going to play a really short video to give you an introduction to campus. Greenwich, London, site of zero degrees longitude. Geneva, Switzerland, home city of the CERN Large Hadron Collider. Just as the Greenwich Observatory is considered the home of time and CERN the heart of nuclear physics, so this campus on the edge of Cambridge is forever linked with the science of genomics. The Welcome Genome Campus is where the first animal genome of a simple nematode worm was sequenced in the late 1990s. And now the campus is leading a revolution in genomics and biodata, bringing the prospect of previously unimagined medical breakthroughs. So, Scientists from all over the world are attracted to work here. Let's see how they define what a genome is. I would say the genome is a blueprint of all the information needed to generate a whole organism. Every organism has its own genome. Yeah. Just as the, the genome connects us with all other humans, you know, we're all, we all share much more of our code than we have that is different. Not only between each species is the genome different, <coughs> but actually each individual of that species has <coughs> a slightly different genome. It's those instructions that define how the natural world looks. That is much better than I can explain. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, so hopefully that gave you a nice little introduction uh, to the campus and our work. Um, I'll say if you're looking for any resources around studying genomics, check out our uh, website, yourgenome.org. Um, there'll be some learning resources specifically grouped against this, uh, this session on the website where you signed up. Um, I will stop sharing my screen now and I will pass over to our speakers for today. So um, as they're talking along, feel free to pop any uh, questions in the Q&A. Okay, so let me share my screen screen now. Is it coming through? Perfect. Okay, so let me just start the presentation. Uh, my name is Agata, and I'm here today with uh, my colleague Andrew, and we've got a recording from, uh, from Lucy, who unfortunately couldn't join us today. And uh, as I've already mentioned, we are working for Illumina, and we are part of the Illumina Laboratory Services team. So today I wanted to talk to you about what we do in our lab, uh, but also about our team, and specifically about our individual career paths. So let's... Let's start then. Um, so as I mentioned, we are Illumina Laboratory Services. Um, we have been specifically set up to deliver 100,000 genomes project. And the project is a, was a first sort of nationwide initiative. And in that we've partnered with another company, which is Genomics England, and worked with NHS as well. 
So within 100,000 Genome Projects, participants were enrolled through NHS. So as you would go to your normal GP, that's where, you, where your samples would be collected through that route and referred for further testing. So the DNA would be extracted from a blood sample and then progressed through the various steps uh, through whole genome sequencing and through to analysis. So within sequencing, what we actually do, we read the sequence of your genome. So we've already heard in the video that each uh, individual has a unique, unique genome. Uh, but there are differences uh, there are differences between between individuals and most of them are are just uh, just just differences that have no implications and that's fine and some of them as compared to the reference genome they may indicate uh, an underlying um, diseases so in a situation when that has happened and the differences that have been found in the project these individuals would be referred back to to NHS and, and really what could be explained through that, through the genetic, with the genetic condition is, uh, and dictate further, further treatment essentially. So um, the project uh, was really set up to benefit patients with the rare genetic diseases and with cancer. And we've completed it in December, 2018. So it's been two years since. Um, it certainly has been a, a success because now today the whole genome sequencing is is part of their routine care within NHS Genomic Medicine Service. So as we started with the 100,000 Genomes Project, now our team is moving into directly working with NHS and within the Genomic Medicine Service. So thinking about the team, uh, the main functions include uh, laboratory operations, uh, quality assurance, software development and bioinformatics, and assay development. We also have a number of supporting functions. So as with any organizations, there will be supply chain, there will be HR, finance, and IT. Um, the main scientifically focused functions are the, 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 four, the four functions that, that are listed in here, and that would be laboratory operations. So we've got a laboratory production, which means this is the team that processes the samples. So from the moment we receive them through our, through our door to the um, through generating the data essentially from the machines. Um, customer and sample management. So again, the team does have some background in science and they need to have a good understanding as well. So we've got various people in that team and they manage the samples uh, prioritization, but also ma uh, manage the customer relationship and process and equipment engineering. So that's the team that is looking after our equipment, but also looking at number of improvements and. Um, and efficiencies within our processes. Within quality assurance, uh, there's operations and development. Quality assurance team is a supporting function, so they support us making sure that we are doing the right thing in the right, right time. Um, there's a lot of people in that team who have started as scientists and they move on and change their career into quality assurance um, and um, uh, yeah, utilizing the skills that they have learned um, through science. Software and bioinformatics, very much data-driven uh, bioinformatics operations, a validation team uh, and software development. Um, and finally, assay development team. So this is the team who's looking at the laboratory processes and bringing the new technologies into our production. So before we can start using a new technology, we have to make sure that it does what it's supposed to be doing. So today uh, we've We've got a talk from Lucy. So Lucy is in laboratory operations team. Um, we also have Andrew. So you, you hear from Andrew about his career and myself. So I look after the laboratory operations team as a whole. So we're going to move on to and start, start with Andrew. Okay, everyone hear me okay? So thank you very much for inviting me here. So I'm a senior engineer from Illumina um, and work in process development. Slide. <laughs> so yeah, my background, my, my kind of education a while back now. So I actually did 10 O levels. Those are pre GCSEs, um, but and specialized in the in the four sciences there as well. So maths, physics, chemistry, biology, and then continued those on to A level, um, which 
really wasn't the best from workload point of view, but it did mean I kept my options open. I was considering medicine, I guess, at the time. Um, but then went to university to do zoology um, and did that at the University of Durham. And again, my specialisations were, were kind of actually entomology, ecology, animal behaviour, um, which don't really relate much to my first role, but you can see again, you've got that flexibility of what you learn in your degrees about, about how you um, approach things and analyse data, for example. Then also postgraduate, I, I did a, an MSc by thesis um, in my first role, uh, doing a dissertation on the sequencing of complementary DNAs, which were an efficient way of sequencing at that time due to the technology couldn't sequence much rapidly and those were the, the, the active parts of the genes. So that was what I started doing um, in my role and wrote that up for an MSc. Uh, a number of years later as well, I have also done an MBA, which is a Masters of Business, business Administration, which is a, a wide range of best business practice um, that includes uh, marketing, strategy, finance, operations, um, IT, for example. So a, a kind of whole range as, as I progress through uh, business or operations best practice. Thank you. So then moving on uh, into my career, my first role a while back uh, was actually the Human Genome Mapping Project Resource Center, which was funded by the Medical Research Council as its as its efforts towards the, the human genome mapping project at the time. And that started off down at Harith Northwick Park, but actually moved up after a couple of years to the Hingston site, actually, um, the, where, uh, where the Wellcome Trust is. And I was started off doing uh, sequencing there, and then that moved into genotyping, which was really about the technology. You can see a couple of pictures there of fluorescence that was basis of the sequencing and genotyping and then the, the data analysis of that. Um, and the genotyping, for example, was looking at different markers, so-called microsatellites and, and SNPs uh, to do mapping of genetic diseases and where they might be located on the human chromosome. I then moved, uh, well, I say then, uh, 13 years, uh, I then moved to Perkin Alma to, do, to be a liquid handling application support scientist. So I'd used a lot of robotics in my time at uh, the MRC. So therefore it was then helping other labs set up robotics. So it could be liquid handling to set up high throughput put genomics, proteomics or other applications and using the, the liquid handlers that is essentially you could do a lot more throughput with the liquid handling. And there's a couple of pictures of different types there. Um, and, and supporting that around the UK. And then following my, um, following Perkin Alma, I actually moved back to the labs at the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute at Hingston and started off as a, a team leader in kind of sequence improvement, polishing the human genome by that time, of just filling in some of the gaps. And then quite quickly moved to my, my kind of expertise of process improvements for DNA pipelines. Uh, which is uh, doing sequencing for so DNA pipeline sequences for a number of um, groups across the Sanger Institute. And I, I started to kind of get into the detail of the process mapping, um, improving the process, knowing where any efficiencies could be made. Essentially, when you're doing high throughput genomics, any efficiencies are kind of multiplied. So, so they're worth the effort of trying to improve things. And again, that included automation, um, and process mapping, various data analysis, looking at data sets. And that brings me right to where I am today at um, Illumina, Senior Engineer at Process Development. And that's, um, I, I was across a couple of campuses with Illumina, but also couldn't get away from Hingston. So again, the, the large lab as Agatha described at Hingston for Illumina and Again, sequencing, and you can see the top right, there's a multitude of different things of my role, but it's it's process engineering. So it's not a per se engineer, but engineering the process to make it more efficient and using the skills and experience of the liquid handling and automation, programming those remotely at the moment, of course. Um, 
and knowing the biology, how the instrumentation works, and then moving all that together to see how we can tweak things, optimize things, have less variation, and essentially make the process better so that it's it's passing first time. And that, that gives us the, the kind of best turnaround time for the customer. Um, so, so all of my career themes really have kind of been high throughput from day one, whether it be genotyping, sequencing, improving hu human health is the end goal really, just using that knowledge and experience. Hello, uh, my name is Lucy Murphy and I'm a laboratory supervisor. I work for Alumna Laboratory Services, just like Agatha and Andrew. Um, so I'll be talking today about my uh, education and how that led me to the career that I'm doing now. So uh, first off, we'll talk about my education. So for school, I went to Stoke College, uh, a small independent school. Uh, it, it's like a private school, but slightly smaller and less expensive. Uh, there were about 43 people in my class and I was by far the biggest class. There are about 200 people in the school in total and that's from reception all the way up to year 11. So quite small. Um, I did 11 GCSEs there. So uh, the core subjects like English and maths, I did triple science, music, French, geography, business studies and PE. Then I moved on to a slightly bigger school uh, King Edward Secondary School to do sixth form uh, and I did an AS in maths and then I went on to do A levels in geography, chemistry and biology. It was here in a biology lesson that I realised I would like to do biochemistry because we were learning about the biochemistry behind photosynthesis and I thought if I can find plants interesting then I must like biochemistry. So I applied to the University of Manchester to do a biochemistry degree uh, and luckily I got in. I did my final year project in disruption of circadian rhythms. A circadian rhythm is essentially your sleep cycle. Uh, so what we were looking at is the gene expression in mice if we uh, disrupted their circadian rhythm. So we had 12 hours with the light on, 12 hours with the light off. And then we shifted that pattern by one hour to see whether the gene expression was different. Uh, it was, which was quite interesting. So that was that was good and a nice little result there. Um, yeah, I have the ubiquitous uh, hat throwing graduation picture there. So that was a really good time. Right, so on to my career. Uh, Illumina was actually my first real job out of university. Um, so I don't have quite the same level uh, of experience that um, Andrew and Agatha have to share. So what I thought I would do was share what I did before university. Um, so before, before I worked here, uh, I had been working with horses since I was 16, officially, uh, and unofficially since I was nine. Um, I also took the gap year, which helped me build up a reserve cash for university, um, you know, for living and whatever else you do at university. Um, yeah, it was, it was my best idea because it meant I, uh, was a first year to go in and have to pay nine grand a year for university as opposed to just three grand. Uh, so in hindsight, not my best decision. Um, but yeah, so over the time of me working with horses, I worked at several different yards, schooling horses, uh, working with children uh, and adults who were learning to ride. I, uh, broke horses in to ride. Uh, and I did lots of mucking out, as you can imagine. I also worked for a horse whisperer. Um, I was essentially his crash dummy um, because he worked with difficult horses and he didn't want to ride them himself, which is fair enough. Uh, I did also work behind a bar at a rugby club in, in the evenings and on Sundays. Uh, this is a really good experience. It took me slightly out of the horse world and into the real world. Uh, and yeah, actually working at a rugby club anyway is just an experience. So that was really good. Uh, so on to Illumina. Um, like I say, when I left uni, I applied for a job at Illumina as a lab assistant and uh, I'm lucky enough to have got it. I applied for that role five years ago and I'm still with Illumina now. So yeah, I definitely love it. Um, I was working uh, on the 100,000 Genome Project doing DNA sequencing. Uh, I did 
automated lab processes, uh, which meant that I wasn't physically doing the lab work on a bench myself with a pipette. Uh, I was operating a robot that did the processes and the liquid handling for me. Uh, it's a really efficient way to do uh, lots of samples at once and it minimizes human error to a degree. Um, I did things like DNA quantification, DNA library preparation, and DNA sequencing on HiSeqs. Uh, and I've got a picture of HiSeq in that top right hand corner. Uh, I edited and optimized lab work instructions, kept the lab running, did general cleaning, stuff like that. Uh, I was lucky enough to get involved in the very first UCAS accreditation that we have. Uh, and that's just uh, an accreditation that shows that we do our, do our job to the highest standards. All of our processes are optimized and standardized in the best way. Um, so yeah, I had to be involved in the assessments. Uh, I say had to, uh, it was a really good experience, but they were really scary. I got, at, got asked questions about what I was doing uh, and uh, whether I could make mistakes and uh, all of that. So it's quite stressful, um, but it was a really good experience. It made me really think about what I was doing and it uh, made me really uh, learn about what I was doing. So it gave me a lot of knowledge and experience about what I was doing. So uh, I also got to help set up the Hingston, Hingston lab, which is our high throughput lab, which is uh, on the Wellcome Trust Sanger site. Um, yeah, so I got to see that um, big empty lab turn into a lab full of robots, um, full of equipment and full of people doing sequencing. So that was brilliant to see it go from empty to, to buzzing with lots of, lots of activity and samples. And that was a really good experience. So three years on, about, I uh, applied for the laboratory supervisor role, which again, I was really lucky to get. So I went from actually doing the lab processes myself to um, planning them. So I'm still in the same team, um, but I'm planning the samples uh, and the tasks that people do on a weekly basis. Uh, I'm also responsible for line managing half of the lab team. Uh, so we have two supervisors and the other supervisor line manages the other half of our lab team. So I have about five reports. Um, it's not part of my job anymore to carry out lab work, um, but I still get to every now and again, uh, just because there are a couple of lab processes that I can dip, dip in and out of, but it's not technically part of my role, so uh, I don't do it often. Um, I also uh, translate weekly and monthly throughput targets into physical lab tasks, which is part of the planning. Um, so, for example, Agatha and my manager will say, uh, these are our monthly targets. We have to process X number of samples. And then uh, the other lab supervisor and myself um, put that into this is how many uh, like runs that needs to be to, to be able to achieve that. Um, one of the best parts of my role that uh, I really didn't realize how much I would enjoy until I started doing it was actually learning how to coach people through their careers. So um, I get to help people develop uh, and steer them in the in the direction of uh, what career they want to take. And uh, yeah, uh, I get to help people every day, which is brilliant. And I really didn't know how much I'd like it until I started doing it. So that's really good. Uh, and actually something that was really challenging for me was learning how to organize not only my own time, but uh, other people's time as well. Uh, I'm quite disorganized as a person, so that was definitely really challenging for me. Um, but it was a really useful skill to learn. So yeah, uh, that's me and uh, thank you for listening. Okay, so um, now is just uh, a little bit about my career. Um, so I'm at the moment a laboratory director at Illumina Lab Services. Um, I can talk you through where I started. Um, so when it comes to my background and, and education, I've gone to school uh, in Poland, so that's where I come from. So at the A levels, I had uh, I chose math, maths, chemistry, and biology. Uh, biology was always something that I really, really enjoyed and was very much interested in. Chemistry possibly less so, but maths was another another subject that I really liked. So. Um, at that time, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, uh, and you know, it could have gone either into some sort of uh, finance and accounting or or a biology subject. Um, so that's that's where it kind of started. Uh, I've decided to go into uh, 
Advanced Science and I chose Molecular Biotechnology at University of Zielona Góra. So you can see on the photo there, that's me and my friend uh, trying to fit in just one lab coat. Um, I had a really, really good time in that laboratory. Um, I've done master's degree in there uh, as well. And it was around, it was already at that time in the, in genetics. And I think genetics was just a subject that uh, I found a real passion for. Um, one thing that you can see here on the photos as well is a fruit fly. So that was a subject of my studies. Um, it, it was really, really good just to be in the lab and being able to cross the flies of, uh, you know, one type of ice with another type of ice or short wings with long wings and just see what happens. Um, and there are the rules from a genetics perspective. So I think it's just, and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading about it. I, I loved what I did. So, uh, so that's where the passion kind of continued. My master's was based around the, um, uh, the disease of a red blood cells. So we were studying a, a human blood, so human DNA. There was a genetic condition that was called hereditary spherocytosis that people have suffered from. And we were trying to, uh, we were part of the uh, research where we were trying to understand why, what is it causing it, which gene or uh, protein on the, uh, which protein on the red blood cells is affected and, uh, and how could it be prevented ultimately? So, um, it was something that I really enjoyed and, and something that then continued throughout my career as well, because I could see the impact of the science on, on an individual uh, and that stayed with me, you'll see in a moment. So um, I'm actually a student at the moment, so I'm doing the uh, Masters of Business Administration at uh, University of Warwick is a distance learning. It's, it's the same Masters as Andrew has done. Uh, I just haven't finished my just yet, I've got another six months to go. Um, it's definitely something that I've been enjoying. And, um, you know, once you finish your studies, it feels like you, not a chance, I'm not going back to studying again. I just want to get a job and go on with my life. But um, that's not quite true because, oh, certainly not for me and not for many people that I have come across. Um, so be open to that uh, because who knows what future will bring. And I definitely enjoy, it's a different type of studying this time around because I do have a full-time job and I have a family, but um, I really, really enjoy it. So that's something I certainly recommend to different people at the different stages of the career. So when it comes to my career, I have, um, I have done a few things, uh, but I actually worked only for two companies um, and I had different roles within these two companies. So the first company was Anglia DNA Services. Uh, so it's a small company based in Norwich um, and I was there, I started as a DNA analyst. So it was a laboratory, um, laboratory work testing DNA samples uh, and really it was a dream come true. So I've, uh, I've, I really wanted the job. I applied, I sent them an email that I will be moving to Norwich. Then I send them another email. Hello, guys, I'm here. And uh, then I send them another email. Well, what's happening? Can, would you, do you need anyone? So I, I, I probably was a little bit annoying, but I kept coming back with my emails there because I really wanted, I felt that this is the right place for me considering the, the things that I have been doing at the university. Um, I've been doing the paternity test for private and legal cases, and I've been doing some forensic crime scene investigation as well. So I've learned a lot. Obviously, it was my first job. So in the first job, you always learn you know, things about people, things about what is it to, what is it like to be working, really. Um, but got to use the techniques that I have studied about, which was really something that I was quite excited. So you can see on the photo, that's, uh, that's me with my colleague um, at the bench, not using robots, just manual pipetting um, in the old school way. So that's not how our lab looks today, certainly, <laughs> but it was a good fun. Um, so then I moved on to Illumina and that was five years ago and I joined uh, Illumina Lab Services as a project delivery manager. I, I didn't really know what the job title means because um, it wasn't completely clear to me at the time, um, but I was working on the um, 100,000 Genome Project then and really the job was to set up the lab, to set up the team and to deliver all these genomes to the best quality and, and best turnaround time possible. So. 
it was exciting. I, I wasn't working at the laboratory bench anymore, but still very close to science. So setting up the lab, thinking about the new methods, bringing the new equipment and things like that, that really was uh, exciting. But also as a being quite close to, to the science from the perspective of any scientific investigations. So uh, things don't always go to plan and you need to figure out why and how to fix it and how to prevent it from happening in the future. So, so that was, really interesting um, and the other thing I'll say is that I've been learning to lead the team while I was uh, at the early stages at the Lumina I have led the team at Anglia DNA services but it was much smaller company uh, with slightly different roles so um, that's something that I've been uh, learning at Illumina as well and here you can see a photo of myself and Lucy so that was five years ago it was a Christmas party in our office um, uh, and the secret Santa we were doing, I think. Uh, so not many people uh, have stayed the same as, as at the time, but it's something that I found that Lucy, myself and Andrew uh, have all been at the company for over five years now. So uh, my current role at Illumina is a lab, uh, lab director. So what I do is uh, provide a leadership and direction, uh, which in reality means that I, I just talk a lot um, and I attend a lot of meetings. Um, I'd like to think that I help individuals on their career journey. I, I, I do give career talks uh, at work as well. And, and just trying to share my experience uh, of what worked for me to get to where I am today. I also manage relationship with the customers um, and look at the new technology for using that in our lab um, and of course making a lot of decisions so that's my my role today um, and here is a photo of uh, myself and my colleagues so I was representing the company at the at the event in Prague where we had to give a talk um, and it was a first sort of big scale such a big scale event for me speaking on a big stage uh, so quite a proud moment um, at the time so that's everything we've got from a from a slight perspective. So I'm going to stop sharing. Awesome! Thank you very much uh, to both of you for for those. Um, for those slides um, and to Lucy for putting together some for us. Um, so we've got about 10, 15 minutes left of our webinar today. So if anyone's got any questions for Agatha or Andrew around uh, what their jobs uh, look like on day to day or any sort of careers related questions, feel free to put those either in the chat box or the Q&A. Um, whilst we wait for any questions to come in, um, I guess I'll put a, a sort of question to both of you. Um, people in our audience today might be um, near the end of high school and looking at university or career options what would your be your sort of best piece of advice whilst looking at sort of next stages uh, so i can start and andrew can then maybe add uh, the back of that as well i think from my perspective and i i said it i think throughout the talk as well is is definitely think about something that you that you like you like doing you're interested in um and even better if you love it uh, it makes so much easier your life and day to day uh, if you do what you love I think that's you find a passion for something um, and 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 yes I think that would be the, the critical the, the the one thing that I would recommend awesome Andrew anything to add to that yeah, I think that's what I was going to say I, I can't remember whose quote it is but it's that kind of thing if you you do you you'd like working and what you like you you don't work a day in your life do you but um yeah you know i think that's certainly your degree but then just it's skills of your degree i think in to me it's not really is it exactly the degree some cases it may be but really it's you know there's i use statistics a lot i guess biology statistics for biologists was something i used and then you kind of use it for life so it's it's those skills that can be applied to lots of things um you know over time things will change of what's the most important and what you know I, when i i went to my interview and i didn't even know what pcr was to be honest um and, and you know things like that polymerase chain reaction um you know things like that were pretty new but then actually was bread and butter but i didn't need to have been trained at that at university at all but it was just the flexibility to to know that and then start working in things that you like doing awesome 
Um, we've got one question come through on the Q and A. So someone's asked, "What breakthroughs would you like to see in genomics?" Which I think is a really good question. So I think for me, it is uh, still uh, there is a lot to come from the precision medicine. So what I mean by that is today, uh, when it comes to healthcare, I think kind of everyone is treated almost in a very similar way. So I think you go to your GP, there are certain symptoms, and it's kind of like one size fits fits all almost. Um, what I'm hoping to see in the future when then the discoveries that are coming, new technologies and things like that, that that medicine is going to be a lot more tailored to an individual. Uh, I think that would be super exciting um, and really plays to you know everyone's health. So that's uh, something that I'm I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I'll just, I'm so realigned, but yeah, pharmacogenetics is the big thing, really. You know, it's, you go to your GP and, um, you know, they've got a couple of generic um, things that might work, but actually their only way of really testing them is to test them, go away for a couple of weeks, see if it works and come back if it doesn't. So, so that kind of sequencing to know everyone's genome exactly and how you might react to the drug because essentially it's to improve the quality of life. You know, you can't always solve everything, but you can certainly impro improve everyone's quality of life by, by knowing how things affect them or might help them. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I think also seeing the sort of uh, the speed at which we can sort of sequence things these days. I mean, like this year has been like a, a proof of concept in that in itself of how quickly we've, we've been able to to understand the the COVID genome and then use that to help with vaccine production is on a scale that we wouldn't have seen uh, in the last you know in the last couple of centuries. So uh, dec decades even even. But um, so I think that that is also a really interesting uh, area of of genomics. Yeah, I mean, just the, the scale of genomics uh, increase has, has just been massive. You know, it's when I first loaded a sequence of one of my pictures was loading and you got best part of 300 bases off 24 samples. Um, and, you know, the first genome project was well over 10 years to get a few. Um, I even found the, found the article, shall we say, that one, which uh, 2001. But... You know, and now we we do that, uh, you know, daily, I guess, in our labs. So it's it's kind of the sequencing output has just improved at a rate greater than, you know, computing developments and everything. So, you know, hopefully we can continue that, really. Awesome. Um, if anyone's got any more questions for our speakers, do feel free to pop them in the chat for our last sort of five minutes or so. Um, I guess I'll ask then, uh, whilst we're waiting for any other questions, what your sort of favourite part of your current job is, if there was just one area that was your favourite? Do you want to go first, Andrew? Um, yeah, the, I guess there's, a, there's lots of things and, and that's kind of why I've evolved into um, an area where I, I kind of do lead a little team um, and have done over the years, but actually it's kind of individual kind of effects that apply high throughput things. So there's that mixture of things. So it's the, the mixture of a bit of automation. Um, there's, there's certain expertise of um, applying the data and looking at the data to improve and reduce variation um is certainly something so it's the improvement and getting better um and and just knowing how things behave I th yeah it, it's just the variety there's there's just a mixture of variety and i guess all the all the different components of my role of um just varied okay um i think for me that I probably i can narrow that down to two main things so um, one is certainly a leadership, so working with people and just seeing how they progress in their uh, and you know change and uh, in their in their roles and how much they can they can achieve. And um, for me, a success is really uh, achieving things through through people now. Uh, so that's that's a huge part of of my day to day job. Um, and the second thing, I think the science is never going to leave me. So it's it's about being able to ask a critical questions, uh, look into the investigations or review certain papers. I think that's just something that I want to keep 
um, even though I'm no longer at the lab bench. <laughs> I think that's one of the exciting bits about working any sort of science fields is that the science is always changing. So I have not done active sort of lab research for, for many years, but the lab, the science is always uh, changing and growing. So it's, it's always, there's always more to learn and to keep up with, which I think uh, is really exciting as well. Awesome. That looks like all of the questions uh, for now. Um, if anyone has got any last ones, pop them in the chat or Q&A. Um, otherwise, I will say a big thank you to, to both of our speakers for today. Um, and that is the last of our series this year of for Genomics Light. We'll be back in the new year uh, doing a series around infectious diseases. So um, you can find out more on our website for when our signups for that uh, go live. But thanks very much, everybody. Um, and I hope everyone has a lovely evening.